Hey what's up everyone this is Phantom Phoenix from Dark Sparks Gaming. Welcome to a new video and in today's video we'll be covering how to beat the princesses. They've been top tier pretty much ever since Ultimate started and they've been on a train that doesn't seem to stop. And if you're going to want to learn how to beat the meta you're going to have to learn how to beat Peach. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so starting off, let's first talk about the mindset that we want to have when playing against Peach because this character, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a game plan going in, it is going to be a rough day for you, my friend, because this character has combos for days and let's talk about how we can first eliminate the crazy combo potential that Peach has. The first tip I have for the Peach matchup is using constructive spacing. Now, the reason why I say constructive spacing is because they're spacing to the point where they're zoning in which if you want to know how to zone, that's actually my last video that I just uploaded, but I'm not going to really going into that much detail about zoning, but constructive spacing is basically spacing in a spot where you're covering options that the character can use around you. A good way to think of this is looking at your shield on your character. Look at all the space around you that your shield covers. Think of a Peach player as a person who wants to constantly hop left, right, up and down all over your shield. They want to constantly pressure you or get into a situation where they can make you feel cornered. You can counter this pressure by simply being close up to Peach where it seems as though it's neutral but it's also in a space where you could either force advantage or disadvantage. Sword characters in Smash Brothers are very good at doing this where they can throw out their sword and it covers such wide range that it makes it hard for Peach to go in. Sometimes you just want to be able to throw out hitboxes so that way Peach can't get into range where she can grab you, hit you with nair or down tilt because she has those stubby little arms and her stubby little feet that she has to work around your sword or work around your move that you're throwing out. So you want to be able to control the space and that way say, okay Peach, you have to work around this space in order for you to deal damage. On top of this, the princesses have really bad speed. Like, not too bad, but it's not good against the majority of the cast or against a lot of the top tier or high tier characters you'll see in the meta. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you can camp Peach. Camping against Peach is actually a pretty valid strategy and it should be something that you have in your mindset when you play against this matchup because against Peach, the turnips, yes, they are a projectile and yes, they can be kind of troublesome depending upon who you're playing. But if you're able to punish Peach, like for instance, when she pulls turnips out of the ground, that is a great window of opportunity you can use to then get some counterplay in against Peach. The big thing that I have against Peach and Daisy is you don't want them controlling the pace of the match, you want to be able to control the pace of the match. Peach and Daisy are definitely characters that exercise tons of patience. If you do not have patience, you will not win against these characters. And for beginning Smash Bros players, this can be tough because the bait and plunge playstyle is not something that most novice Smash players or beginning Smash players like. You have to be able to adapt to it. Every single matchup in Smash Brothers has its specific ways that you can win. Yes, you can make some adaptations to those playstyles, but if you have a game plan going into it and you kind of have a general idea of how to win X or Y matchup, winning games just becomes that much easier. Alrighty, now that we have mindset out of the way, let's now talk about some Peach specifics. We're going to be going into some weaknesses, we're also going to be going into how turnips function, and how you should be counterplaying against Peach's turnips. Let's look at one of the brighter weaknesses of Peach's gameplay, which involves her landing. Outside of down air, Peach doesn't really have that many landing options when it comes to getting back on that stage, which is kind of important because you're not going to be off stage forever in a Smash Bros match. So how are we going to take advantage of this? Let's look into the different ways of which a Peach player will land or get back onto the stage. Learning these two avenues will allow us to edge guard and juggle Peach more effectively. A standard way of getting back to the stage and landing as Peach and Daisy is just waiting for your float to run out and then simply landing on the stage or on a platform. Some Daisy and Peach players you'll even see them go straight through the platform and just land that down air on you or a nair. Or in the rare scenario, they could actually condition you this way. I've seen a lot of Daisy and Peach players will actually land on the platform, wait for you to shield, and then drop your shield, and then they'll finally hit you with the down air or nair. 
A lot of Peach and Daisy players will also like to go for short floats where they'll be floating for just a short amount of time and then quickly drop. This is used so that way they can wait for you to go for a move and then punish you for it. Let's say you're trying to juggle them with up air or up smash and it misses or it whiffs, then they'll quickly drop and then attack you. A key aspect of Peach and Daisy's floating ability is that one, when they go for that floating ability and hit the ground, it's going to get rid of a little bit of end lag, therefore making the move slightly faster. And when they use the move while floating, they're moving away or towards you. So this can be extremely scary because if they land that one move on you, they can then pressure you even more. And so this is something I really want to bring up because most novice or beginner players don't really think about this when they're playing against Peach or Daisy. They kind of just let it happen to them. And they have to realize that when this is happening to you, you either have to move close up on Peach and Daisy and make that into your own advantage state, or then back away so you don't get put in disadvantage. Now looking into how Peach and Daisy can recover. Of course, they can use their float to simply grab the ledge. Also with floating, it gives you the option so that if you don't want to grab the ledge immediately, you can just up B later. Another option that's not too common, but you'll see it every once in a while, is Peach and Daisy players floating and then using their parasol to go above the ledge and land on the stage. This is a little bit riskier because you have the end lag of then landing, so if you see a Peach and Daisy player go for that and you see them open for when they land, you probably want to punish it. Remember how earlier I was talking about Peach and Daisy's down air? Well, the one thing that you can use to your advantage in this matchup is platforms. Platforms will help you immensely because Peach and Daisy, if they're above you, like really above you, they can't land with down air and they can't land with nair unless they go through the platform and then use it on you. In which, in that case, you should have the reaction time to then hit Peach or Daisy with an out of shield move or simply an anti-air. With platforms in the way, this then forces Peach and Daisy to have to go with a more linear approach like dash attack or nair because a down air will not work and nair in some scenarios if they jump too high won't work either. Since you know Peach and Daisy are most likely going to have to attack you straight up, this means you can use your rolls to your advantage, or if you're a swordy and have range, use that sword or maybe even a tether grab. Okay, we covered how Peach is going to land or how Peach is going to get back to the stage, but we haven't gone over the most important part of Peach's toolkit, turnips. We have to know how turnips work, which ones deal the most damage and which ones are most likely to come out during the course of a game. Okay, Peach and Daisy have three different types of turnips. The standard turnips which have the different looking eyes and then you have the stitch face turnip. This one, if you see this one, which is the one I have on screen right now, this one deals the most damage. If it hits your opponent, it's going to hurt and it's going to deal a whopping 34% and it can kill extremely early. Whenever you see the winking turnip, the winking turnip will deal double the damage and the dot eyes turnip will deal three times as much damage. With of course, as I mentioned earlier, the stitch face dealing the most out of any of the turnips. In addition to turnips, there's two other items you want to watch out for that Peach and Daisy can pull out, which are the Bobomb and Mr. Saturn. Bobomb, of course, can kill even higher than a stitch. The chances of it appearing is extremely slim. It's like 0.4% of the chance of a bomb appearing. You're not gonna see it that often, but don't shield it if you do see it, because if you have a small shield, it will most definitely break. And including shield breaks, you have Mr. Saturn, which will instantly break a shield no matter how much health the shield has. Going into strengths, Peach and Daisy have a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them. It's absolutely crazy the amount of strengths this character has and definitely makes Peach and Daisy top 5. Their combo game is utterly insane and some moves that you need to watch out for are down tilt, nair, and of course the infamous down air. All of these moves are extremely great for combo starting and even back air can set up some combos on the majority of the cast. So you have to be a hyper parry master. This is one thing that will help you tremendously in this matchup. Remember how I mentioned the space around your shield and how you want to protect that in this matchup? This is where parrying comes into play because if you're a really good parrier or you're just using really good shield management, 
This matchup becomes a lot less stressful because you can parry the aerials and then punish with out of shield play or create your own advantage state. A textbook play of why you need to take care of the space around you is what happens on screen right now in slow motion. This down air that Sam Sora lands on this Mario is what Peach players do all the time. It's just a matter of being able to recognize the combo setups that Peach players have when they're conditioning you and just going in with the right moveset that will make the Peach matchup just a little bit easier for you guys to win and for you guys to play. As before, even for me, Peach and Daisy were a difficult matchup until I realized a game plan and approach and what I should be looking out for against this matchup. Okay everyone, that's all I have for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and if any of you would like to see more on Peach or Daisy and how these two characters play, or maybe it's a how to beat video or anything like that, just please, please put it down in the comments section because I have a feeling that with this video, Peach and Daisy are just such technical characters that it's really hard to cover in something that's really 10 minutes long. So if you would like to see maybe a part two to this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section. Okay everyone, my name is Phantom Phoenix and I'll see you all next time on Dark Sparks Gaming.